shut off, uh, you stage, uh, and the second stage engines uh, ignite, and you go from about four Gs to about a negative one and a half Gs as the whole stack unloads briefly, and then to a plus one and a half Gs, all in just slightly over a second. And that's probably the most dynamic part of the whole lunar mission. It's a unique, special relationship when you're in the left seat, when you're commander, when you've got the ability to, to not just monitor, but to fly the Saturn V. And when you got to respect, you, the, it's the two of you, you and the Saturn V, which are going to get you there, one way or the other. And it tells you that, hey, baby, if I have a little problem with my guidance back here, I'll give it to you. You can take me there. I'll keep, I'll keep, I'll keep running. You can take me there. And I don't know if that comes across the way I really mean it or the way it felt to me at the time, but that's the way it is. 17 Houston, you are go for orbit. Go for orbit. Those are kind words, Robert. We're go for orbit here. You look just as pretty in Earth light as you do in uh, sunlight. Roger, uh, America. Have a good bird. I was strolling on the moon one day. In, in the very, very month of December. Now, May. May. May is the month. May, that's right. So 350 pounds for this automobile that you want as big as possible on the lunar surface. Uh, and folding that in such a way that it could be carried in a small volume of 4x4x4 four by four by four, and then unfolding it on the lunar surface with little or no expenditure of energy and time on the part of the astronauts. That was the technical ta challenges that were involved. But it would climb up grades, it would get us anywhere we wanted to go. Um, uh, I always, uh, you know, coincidentally when you cross a set of tire tracks, you'd always look both ways just by habit to see whether anything else was coming. Oh, hey, there is boring soil. Well, don't move it till I see it. It's all over. Orange. Don't move it till I see it. I've stirred it up with my feet. Hey, it is. I can see it from here. It's orange. Fantastic, sports fans. It's trench time. Jack, that is really orange. The uh, value geologically of the rover was that it extent vastly extended our range of investigation. With the uh, last three missions to the moon, we extended the uh, time that we could stay on the moon uh, significantly to where we could have three excursions instead of just a long excursion rather than just two short ones. And indeed, we would not have discovered the orange soil or pyroclastic glass uh, at Shorty Crater if we had not had the rover. We never would have gotten there. We'd never been out that far and then had a chance to visit that point. And that orange soil has turned out to be probably the most significant scientific sample uh, that was brought back from the moon. You all know that a uh, very significant discovery of some orange soil was uh, made uh, by uh, Jack Smith. What he really doesn't know is that I had a little excess tang left over and I dumped it out every time I went by. In spite of Ron's uh, clumsiness with the tang, uh, we have done something with your rockets and with your rover that is unique in the history of mankind. I think we can truly say that as a result of the Apollo exploration and the samples uh, that we returned, and then uh, we developed a first order understanding of the origin and evolution of the moon. There's still a great deal of debate going on, but we can say that we have that kind of understanding. I'd like to just let what I believe history will record that America's challenge of today has forged man's destiny up tomorrow. Right our way, Houston. That's your grid. Excellent. Good to see you. Good to have you all back up here. It's been a good trip. Man, yeah, that challenge is a beautiful vehicle. Ron had his chance because he now was going to do a spacewalk to retrieve a lot of the film and the cameras and um, and the recorded information of those experiments that he was conducting while he was in lunar orbit. I remember he was out there on that umbilical and he waved at a television camera to his kids, he said. Hey, John, how you doing? Hi, Jamie. That was kind of the last thing 
we were, we were able to accomplish or do on that flight. And you all had to make sure that everything worked up until that time. You really did. You had to get the booster off of the ground. You've got to make sure you get on the way to the moon. All of these parts and pieces and little bitty things have got to be working before I even had a chance to get out and, and say hi, hon, or what have you, and do this. And that's the part that I really want to thank you for. I'm, I'm not thanking you for me being able to get out there, but I'm thanking you from the standpoint of being Americans, being proud, being able to accomplish not only Apollo 17, but any of the missions that we've sent up there. I'll tell you, I'm proud to be an American, and I know you are. I thank you. Now, the loss of Ron was unexpected. Yeah. Uh, and it was it was a tough team, a tough thing to take. Uh, he's still part of our crew. Well, Ron was one uh, uh, was an astronaut that I think represented the the mainstream of the astronauts. He came from a uh, uh, from the middle of the United States in Kansas. Uh, he uh, uh, went to the Navy as so many Midwesterners do. Uh, Vietnam veteran, over a hundred combat missions. And coincidentally enough, when we came back from Apollo 17, uh, the ship that was our recovery ship was the USS Ticonderoga, the same ship, poetic justice for Ron, poetic justice, the same ship that Ron had served aboard during the Vietnam War. We stood on the shoulders of giants, and uh, I'm looking at those shoulders right now. You know, we need to get back into that Saturn V world mentality, quite frankly, too to build something that will take us back out there where we belong. And quite frankly, I, am, I, I have been the last man on the moon for far, far longer than I ever, 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 ever dreamed of being. And last is only temporary anyway, because I do know down deep in my heart there is a young boy and there is a young girl out there with the, well, uh, with, with the courage and determination uh, possessor of that indomitable will that will truly take us back out there where we belong. There's no question in my mind. Hello, I'm astronaut Steve Robinson. Welcome to NASA Direct. 